So thank you, Levin, for the introduction. So as you can see, I'm French. And I try to share with you over 12 minutes that uh, I believe that the internet is more than the French speaking part. I know that's the challenge that was put to me. Um, it's very good, Eric, to come after you because much of the things you showed, uh, we believe in that as well as Microsoft. So in 12 minutes, I'd like to share with you what we see at what's next at Microsoft. So I think I will have time to land a few insights. So let's jump in. And the, the first thing you do when you try to look at the future, you try to see the emerging trends. So let's look at today. What do you see today? You see multiple devices. Uh, basically, I have an HP EliteBook Revolve on my work PC. But then I have a Lu Nokia Lumia. Then I have my Surface at home. But basically, I'm using the OneNote tool. Basically, when I put the, the data on my OneNote, it will automatically show on my Lumia, it will automatically show on my Surface, and basically, my team member will also see the data. That's the world we are in today, and all that is empowered by the big data, the cloud that Eric shared. Then you go to social. So what Microsoft has done on social is to make sure we have the best team around us. So we bought Skype two years ago. We bought Yammer last year. So you will see social not only on personal, but you will see social on business. You will see social, for example, in the enterprise. But now there will be bridge between Link, between Yammer, and the customer when the, and the partner. So basically, it's an ecosystem of communication. And social is much broader than what we've seen so far. Also, in Bing, you will see that uh, when you have a, a search on Bing in the US, the third column is basically what your friends will say if you were to ask them the question. So social is something that is basically everywhere, but evolving very quickly. And one of the themes of today would be about natural user interface. You've seen uh, that on the new Windows 8 devices, all the devices are touch. So it's not only the tablet, even the PC, the laptop, now are touch. Some of you may be using uh, Kinect, and you can see what you can do with these type of things. So these are technology that you can use now, but these are the emerging trends. If you try to project yourself in the future, what you will see basically is three things. You will see first computing everywhere. And you may have noticed we don't say computer, we say computing. What you will see that actually every wall will be a digital screen, but not only a screen that tells you something, but a screen that will be able to capture data about you. It will be a sensors. So everything that could have electricity, electricity in it, either through uh, a cable or through a, a solar panel in it, will be able to capture data. So that's basically a new way where basically the world will surround you with data, and we are going to treat this data. But this data only makes sense in your context. If you look at the search business, which was a big revolution of the year 2000, at the beginning it was uh, providing you with a, a list of queries, a list of links. Then it was providing you with answers. Then it was trying to get you do something. But I think the next frontier in context is to try to anticipate your intent. And I can tell you that the best queries are those that you don't make. It's when you give, you're given the solution before you even ask for it. And that's basically how the context surrounding with computing everywhere will be able to bring you to. Last but not least, I think it's working on your behalf. I think here is the idea that, uh, for example, Philip uh, told me yesterday he cannot come today. So in the future, I will be able to tell to my PC, clear my Wednesday agenda. And the PC will be able to differentiate between the meeting where I was a secondary attendees, and they will say, OK, Avant will not come, and the meeting where I have to attend, and automat automatically, it will reschedule those meetings. And I think it's a very important thing. So the machine will basically become your smart assistant. And these are all these, the big changes that you can see coming up. And with partners like HP, we make those happen. But I think it's important to see how we are going to get there. And I think here, I'd like to show some insights. And again, it builds on the technology that HP is doing. So the first one that you will see here is big data and machine learning. IDC last year shared that the amount of data that you have now in the world is 1.8 zettabytes. So it will equal to 1.8 trillions of gigabytes. And they will say that over the next five years, there will be as, as much data created as it has been since the beginning of humanity. 
But all these data obviously cannot stay on one computer. So that's why it's so important to have these big, gigantic data centers that only Microsoft or Google can really build at the end. And these data centers will be cloud connected. And I think here what you will see is the ability to basically process this massive amount of data so that it can serve you. But at the end of the day, it's really the machine learning that will make this data adapting to you. I have an example. When we launched the, new, the Windows Phone, uh, we wonder how we will create an input mechanism for the Windows Phone. So we look at the English languages, and there are 2.5 billion words that are used in English across the world. And with big data selection, we say, okay, actually there are only 600,000 sentences that really matter. And then we were able to propose an auto-filter, an auto-correction mechanism that was right 94% of the time. But now with machine learning, basically the input mechanism is learning your own faults. And now what is suggested to you is more and more relevant, more and more accurate. And that's the machine learning. If you move out the, the thing that I said, the, the physical world and the digital world will blend more and more. I have an example. So uh, video conferencing. Today you are in front of your screen, and basically uh, you see an image. What you will see tomorrow, and uh, we've seen some demo of that at Microsoft already, is like your avatar will enter the conference room. The avatar will look like almost yourself. The avatar will reflect your emotion. And also you will see the avatar of the other people. And at the end, you, will all, always, you almost have the, um, the impression that you are all in the same room. So it's like teletransportation. So we all watched uh, Star Trek when we were younger. It's almost there. I think these are the things that will change the way we collaborate, the, the way we work. And you will see at the end your physical world, the digital world will really blur. You will never see again your PC as a something you watch to. You will see the PC as something you can control, something that you, you, you can be selective about. But at the end, you will enter into the PC. So it's not the one-way conversation. It will be you entering the image on the PC. The natural the natural interaction is very critical at Microsoft. We've been working on that for 15 years. And that's why you saw the Kinect innovation. I think here, when you were in the 90s, you were discussing the, the GUI, the graphical user interface. Now it's about the NUI. And basically what you see here is how we can make all this machine learning, all these interactions that you have, anticipate your needs and more and more natural. I'm a French speaker. Most of you are Dutch speaker. You know, what, one thing that will be very new for me is being able to speak Dutch to you without the effort of learning Dutch. So we have something in the making on that. I think this, that is the ultimate new. So we had a conference in Beijing in October where our chief research officer went there and he showed uh, how basically we can help here. So basically he spoke in English and then the machine automatically translated uh, in Mandarin. You will say, okay, that's good. But with machine learning, when you add that on top of that, the machine was able to, to scan the voice of the person, and actually at the end was adapting the exact tone of voice, and basically he was himself speaking in Mandarin. And that's an amazing uh, breakthrough if you know the complexity of uh, translation, the complexity to adapt it, so, and that's what you will see coming up. So I hope that next year I will come to you and speak in Dutch. That would be a, a big breakthrough for me. On this slide, I'd like to show you, okay, how does it translate it to my workplace? A lot of us, we are working for big corporation. So what you will see here. So basically what you see is you will have multiple input devices. They will all reflect the same um, image. They will basically go to the same cloud-based services. They will maintain the same familiarity, the same integrity, integrity, the same enterprise-grade services that you expect. And then you will see the room will be extended with interactive displays. These displays are not just screen that you can see already today on the expensive conference room. These will be displays that you can interact with. You can take your pen, you can write on those displays. We bought a company in August last year called uh, Pixel Screen. They are doing, doing the biggest uh, screen in the world that are interactive. And in pure Microsoft manner, we are going to lower the cost of those screens by 20, so that they don't stay an exclusive uh, screen for the big CIO rooms, but will be the natural conference room. 
And I think it's really where you see big players like HP, Microsoft, who try to make the future happen, who try to make it happen. That's what you said, Eric. And I think I'm excited because I see it happen now. I've seen it in demo, and I'm sure if we meet again next year, you will see it happen. So I think now what I'd like to share with you is uh, something excited around Kinect. But I think here, again, you will see how Microsoft works. We put our technology into action with natural user interface, and then we build a platform. We give the APIs, and then something happened. People use Kinect for something we didn't foresee. And that's what, how we see the future. The future is not something you anticipate. The future that is something you help create. So I'd like to show you the video so that you can see what happened with Kinect, and it will also change our business life. We started with a sensor that turned voice and movement into magic. Xbox, play. And we thought, this will be fun to play with. And it was. But something amazing is happening. The world is starting to imagine things we hadn't even thought of. Unexpected things. Helpful things. Beautiful things. Inspired things. Which is why, even though the world keeps asking us what we'll do with Connect next, we're just as excited to ask the world the same thing. So I hope we share with you what we dream, and we want to build it together. We want to make it happen. So I invite you to go on the Microsoft.com slash next website, because every week we'll update the new thing we are doing. We share the same passion for technology, but we want the technology that comes to life. So we want to create it with you. And then that's why we are here in Belgium. If you have the chance to be invited to one of our EBC or to visit one of our data centers in Dublin, go for it. You will see the future and we will make it happen with you. Thank you for your time.